Yep. Was a was a bad dog last night, and weren't you? Yeah, you were. Yeah, he's getting real, uh, being really clingy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Anyway, he went running off last night, and he's never done that before. And it was like out in the dark with the flashlight, trying to look for him, calling for him, and being a little butthead, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he's bugging the crap out of me now. Anyway, I'm just out here this morning. It's a little bit coolish, but not too bad. And uh, <laughs> you are a nut. Yeah, you are a nut. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, now I'm trying to even... Trying to remember what the heck I was even going to talk about. Um, somebody starting their car over there. Anyway, I want to... I'm sure a lot of you... Uh, I don't even know where I'm supposed to look on this. I'm doing this with my phone in a, in a landscape position. So if my eyes are going all over the place, that's why. Just anyway, um, where was I? You guys have all seen the stuff that's come out about the cremation and just. All, all this crazy stuff that it's like they're just flaunting stuff in our face. That's that's how it comes across to me. Um, it seems like no matter what amount of eyes are on them or what public scrutiny they're facing, it's just kind of like they're flipping us off and saying hey we're going to do things our way and we don't give a crap what any of you people think it's just really like an entitled type of attitude like we're above all you and you guys are all beneath us and you know there's we're way smarter than you and way God, I don't even know how to put it. But one of the things that's really struck me is the fact that Truckee is a very affluent area. And, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with having money. But when you're dealing with affluent areas like this, there's a different mentality with rich people than the than there is with us pobres <laughs> and uh, it's just a, it's just a different attitude and a different sense of entitlement a different sense of superiority you know they just think they're you know they're better than us and you think about a lot of the things that have gone on with this case stuff that just it seems like they've deliberately screwed everything up deliberately botched it, deliberately doing everything they can to basically say we don't give a crap what you people think we're gonna come up with our own determination we're gonna you know sweep it under the carpet but anyway I want to kind of go through some things um, in this video just you know and keep in mind I'm not saying rich people are jerks a lot of them are there's a lot of them that are total jerks there's a lot of them that are really nice people as well and there's a lot of jerks who are poor you know there's a lot of nice poor people as well so I mean there's there's good and bad in every class but this is kind of like a special situation 
that I really want us to. I can't figure out where I want to put the phone. Yay! I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Yeah. By the way, yeah, I am an MJ fan, just so you know. So, all you, all you LeBron groupies can go take a hike. <laughs> that ought to cause some controversy. Anyway, um, I want us to look at some things in this video today and just... You know, I'm just kind of knocking some ideas around as to what's going on. And so, uh, hopefully it'll be informative to you. And let's get into that now. Okay, in order to understand the mentality there in the Truckee area, let's get into some particulars and get to know the area a little better. Uh, I think it'll give us a better understanding of why we're seeing some of the attitudes that we're seeing. Uh, first of all, Truckee is a pretty affluent area. You know, it's <laughs> it's got a lot of rich folk there. And in fact, uh, there is in one article that talks about Truckee and it says housing costs in Truckee are among some of the highest in the nation. All right, this area is part of the Lake Tahoe region. Of course, Lake Tahoe is known as Billionaire's Row. In fact, it says here, it says it is considered Billionaire's Row or Income Village. And it's basically one giant country club with, a large, with large gated estates that you can only see from the water. Among the wealthy residents, and it lists a bunch of people that I don't have any idea who they are. But I know that, uh, was it Zuckerberg? Isn't he the guy, I think, that started Facebook or something? Anyway, he's got, he's got like a big estate there on the lake. And some other, there's other movie stars that have, have. So anyway, um, anyway, it's, it's an affluent area. A lot of rich people. And, um. In the article also goes on to say, it says, As Truckee is a decidedly white-collar town with fully 87.98% of the workforce employed in white-collar jobs, well above the national average. Overall, Truckee is a town of professionals, sales and office workers, and managers. It goes on to say, of important note, Truckee is also a town of artists. Truckee has more artists, designers, and people working in media than 90% of the communities in America. Wow. Wow. This concentration of artists helped shape Truckee's character. All right. It says, also of interest is that Truckee has more people living here who work in computers and math than 95% of the places in the U.S. All right, so Truckee is very unique. So you got a lot of educated people there. In fact, the article also says, if knowledge is power... Truckee is a pretty powerful place. 55.72% of the adults in Truckee have earned a four-year college degree, master's degree, MD, law degree, or even PhD. And compare that to the national average of 21.84% for all cities and towns. It says the per capita income in Truckee in 2018 you know, this is four years ago, people, so it has greatly incre increased since then. It says the, uh, the little, little cap capita in the per capita income of Truckee in 2018 was $53,311, which is wealthy relative to California and the nation. This equates to an annual income of $213,244 for a family of four. However, Truckee contains both very wealthy and poor people as well. Okay, so the next thing I want us to look at, we see what, you know, the income is there. Um, get ready to see some eye-popping 
<laughs> figures here as far as the real estate that's in Truckee. And, okay, now there are seven main neighborhoods in the Truckee area. I want us to take a look at some of the real estate prices there. You might find this interesting. Okay, this, this is going to be a little tedious, so if you want to go ahead and skip ahead in the video, you're more than welcome. But there might be some people that find this in, interesting. I know I did. All right, and we're going to look at all seven neighborhoods very quickly, hopefully. Okay, Prosser Heights. Okay, the Prosser Heights median real estate price <laughs> is $1,089,422. Meh, pure pocket change. Uh, which is more expensive than 78.3% of the neighborhoods in California and 95.2% of the neighborhoods in the U.S. The average rental price in Prosser Heights is currently 2989 per month. Okay. <laughs> the next one. The Armstrong Tract. Okay, keep in mind, who was it that that founded the Worldwide Church of God. It was Herbert W. Armstrong, right? So we got the Armstrong Track. Armstrong Track median real estate price is 942835 which here in 2022, I guarantee you, is, I mean, it might even be double that by now. Who knows? But I guarantee you it's over a million. This is which is more expensive than 69.9% of the neighborhoods in California and 93.2% of the neighborhoods in the U.S., the average rental price in Armstrong Track is currently $2,707, which I guarantee you that's gone up considerably in four years. I, I couldn't find any more any more recent statistics than this. So, But, I mean, this at least, it, this is accomplishes the purpose of letting us see, you know, this is a pretty affluent area. All right, North Star Mountainside slash Martis Camp. Median real estate price is Two million fifty-seven thousand three hundred and twelve. All right, so you thought that one was bad. It says which is more expensive than ninety-one point three percent of the neighborhoods in California and ninety-eight point one percent of the neighborhoods in the U.S. The average rental price in North Star Mountainside Martyrs Camp is currently two thousand five hundred and four, which I find kind of interesting considering you know the, the couple of the other ones were. You know, the average price of the home was less. And the rent there is actually is lower than, than the other ones, which is kind of weird. All right. The Tahoe Donner neighborhood. Tahoe Donner, median real estate price is 775769 which is more expensive than 53.2% of the neighborhoods in California and 87.6% of the neighborhoods in the U.S. The average rental price in the Tahoe Donner is currently 2989 which you can almost guarantee it's over four or 5000 now, four years later. Okay, Glenshire, Devonshire, slash Juniper Hills. Median real estate price is 951945 which is more expensive than 69.5% of the neighborhoods in California and 93.1% of the neighborhoods in the U.S. The average rental price in Glenshire, Devonshire, Juniper Hills is currently 3829 Ay, ay, ay. So imagine, imagine what it is four years later. All right. Next one, Prosser Lakeview Estates. Median real estate price is $824,262, which is more expensive than 58.1% of the neighborhoods in California and 90.1% of the neighborhoods in the U.S. Average rental price, $33.65. All right. And the last one we'll look at is Donner Woods slash Donner Lake. The median real estate price is seven hundred eleven thousand zero eight zero, which is more expensive than forty six point six percent of the neighborhoods in Cali and eighty one point four percent of the neighborhoods in the U.S. The average rental price is two thousand four hundred and one. Ah, what a bargain! Okay. Um, Something else I th thought I might throw in here is um, 
What 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 do people say about trucking? All right, just to give us a little bit more rounded vision of this place. All right, I put in a couple of reviews. It says that one guy says this Truckee is a party town with loads of activities year round. The influx of visitors can slow the traffic circles and cause major shutdowns on the I eighty freeway. There are a lot of second this is the, this is the one I found interesting. There are a lot of second home owners here who are rude and demanding. All right, so this guy lives there, right? This next guy lives here too. He says it is a beautiful town with a very strong community. <laughs> There's that word again. All right, now and community is not a bad word, but it's just the, the way that we've seen it used. It always kind of like makes me raise my eyebrows. Okay, it's a beautiful town, with a very strong community. People really care about their neighbors, and willing to come together when one of the members need help. Yeah, especially when they need to cover up for them. Um, many people don't even lock their houses because they feel safe. Our community cares about the environment and promote health and eco choices. So we're a very prog progressive. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with all that, but, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go into that because I just tick people off. Um, I'm not, I'm not into tree huggers. Sorry. Um, Another article I read states that over the years, the Truckee area has drawn an increasing amount of paranormal tourism. Oh, I get that. Paranormal tourists. All right. There's got to be something that's drawing them, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of stories. If you, if you Google it, there's a lot of stories about, you know, different things being haunted and just strange things going on paranormally. In uh, in the Truckee area, but you know, take it for what it's worth. It's just that you know, th the main point is Truckee kind of has a reputation for the bizarre and the weird and the paranormal and all that stuff. Now, here's something that I've found very intriguing and very alarming at the same time. Now, notice this. This is an article that came out. It says, under new short-term rental rules in Truckee, California, the number of vacation rentals will be capped at 1255. The number of active registered short-term rentals at the end of 2021 amid concerns about the availability of local affordable housing. In addition, Truckee will start phasing out short-term rentals and multifamily units and accessory dwelling units and requiring new homeowners to wait 365 days before registering as a short-term rental. The town will also be able to issue inspection requests for short-term rentals with 30 days for owners to respond. Owners may have to pay a fee for such inspections, <laughs> even though they didn't order them. The new ordinance increases fines for breaking short-term rental rules to 1500 for a first violation, 3000 for a second, and five thousand for further violations. Owners will have thirty minutes to res thirty minutes to respond to property disturbances, and an hour to correct any issues. If an issue isn't resolved within that time frame, a compliance officer will investigate and could issue a fine. All right. So here's the deal. This is what they're doing now. They they pass this law requiring anybody that wants to use their home as an Airbnb to have this registration certificate in order to do so. Okay, now that this is directly this is directly from their city code here. It is unlawful for any person to advertise, maintain, operate or use a short-term rental within the town of Truckee without a transient occupancy registration certificate so like i said you you can't you can't uh, even operate an airbnb in your home in truckee without this transient you know there are this certificate issued by the city all right and okay this ordinance and, th and like i said this is coming straight from their city code the ordinance states hosts must 
obtain a transient occupancy registration certificate in order to provide stays for less than 30 days. So in other words, if you're not renting it out, then it's just, you know, you're using it as a short-term rental, Airbnb, or whatever. Okay, whether you're renting for renting it for a day or 29 days. That's what it's talking about. In order to provide stays for less than 30 days and renew on an annual basis. There are a maximum of 1255 registration certificates available in Truckee, and only one permit will be issued per property. Okay, so my question is, what if it's a multifamily, multifamily property? Let's say some of these units, were like the one we were looking at the other day, it's got 36 units in it. You know, but it's common property. It's considered one common property. So you got 36 units on there. Does that mean that only one person can use their place as an Airbnb? I don't know. I guess you'd have to define what they mean by that. But 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 the fact that it says will be issued per property. Okay, so on these these communes, communes that only you know they have multi-families there, but only one property. To me, that says that you can only one person can have it. All right, so the thing is that we see that you don't only have to have the certificate in order to make your place an Airbnb. There's only a limited amount of these. Only a limited amount of these certificates that are issued. And I can almost guarantee you that they're very selective on who they're issued to. Why do they limit them? You've got 17,000 residents there, but you don't, but of course there's not going to be 17,000 places because you got families, whatever. But still, you know, why are you only issuing over, you know, a little over 1,200 certificates? I just... All right, so the question comes up. How does their city code def define a transient? Okay, again, this is from their city code. It says, for the purposes of this section, transient means any person who either at the person's own expense or at the expense of another obtains lodging space or the use of lodging space on a daily or weekly basis or on any other basis for less than 30 consecutive days. Okay. All right, so next thing I want to look at is we see that we have a very affluent area. And some of you may be re questioning why I'm doing this, but I'm just trying to give us a picture. Because let me tell you something. I'm not rich. And I do know that rich people are different than poor people. They're different in their attitudes. Uh, and not all of them are like that. I mean, I'm not I'm not throwing everybody in one basket and saying that you know the whole shebang is like that. You've got you've got some poor people who are entitled to for whatever reason, you know, with no reason to be like that. But but the but the thing is, is people get richer. They the more wealthy they are, the more likely they are to feel entitled to exploit other people. You know, in fact, this one article, this is this this is what this one article says. It says they're more likely to feel entitled to exploit others and to cheat. That extends to politics, too. Call it the asshole effect. <laughs> it's funny. They did s some experiments. Just as, as a and what they were trying, what they were trying to determine is if wealthy people uh acted more entitled than, than, you know, normal or normal people, you know, mid, middle income or, you know, poor people. Did they act different than them? Did they act more entitled to them? All right. And, and this one article I read about an experiment that they did, and this is just one experiment. I just found it kind of interesting. It says, researchers position themselves at crossroads. They watched out for aggressive, selfish behavior among drivers and recorded the make and model of the car. They found drivers of expensive, high-status vehicles behave worse than those sputtering along in battered Toyota Corollas. All right, or 
Toyota Camry, like I used to have. It was a piece of crap. <laughs> so they go on to say they were four times more likely to cut off drivers with lower status vehicles. As a pedestrian looking carefully left and right before using a crossing, you should pay attention to the kind of car bearing down on you. Drivers of high-status vehicles were three times as likely to fail to yield at pedestrian crossings. In contrast, all the drivers of the least expensive type of car gave way to pedestrians. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? There's another experiment they did where they found that the richest students more were more likely to consider stealing or benefiting from things to which they were not entitled than those from a middle class or lower class background. And they say, the reason, it turns out, is that even thoughts of being wealthy can create a feeling of increased entitlement. You start to feel superior to everyone else, and thus more deserving. Something at the center of narcissism. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? They found this was true of people who were, in real life, better off. Wealthier people were more likely to agree with statements like, I honestly feel like I'm just more deserving than other people, and place themselves higher on a self-assessed class ladder that indicated increasing levels of income, education, and job prestige. This had straightforward and clearly measurable effects on behavior. Okay? And like I said, the reason that I bring all this up is because Entitled people, and when I say entitled people, I don't necessarily mean all rich people, because they're, like I said, there's entitled people, but as a general rule, wealthy people, you know, are more in, entitled, feel more entitled than regular people. But but entitled people are generally more self-centered, more self-absorbed, and even develop this feeling of invincibility that they are untouchable. Haven't we seen that with a lot of professional athletes, the, the stuff that they pull, thinking that they're untouchable? You know, that we, we would never, you know, normal people, we'd never try anything like they try, you know? But they feel, you know, but, but, but entitled people just, you know, feel that they're so superior that the minions below them are insignificant and don't matter. I mean, look at this case and see what we're seeing here. I mean, seriously, it's like, regardless of the pro public scrutiny that we give them, it's like, it's like all the eyes on them don't even exist, and they continue to, you know, the way I look at it, and you may not agree, but the way I look at it is they just continue to almost spit in our faces by their actions and remarks. I mean, the way everything has been done, it's like, you know, it's like, we don't care if you're watching this or not. We think, we still think, you know, we can get away with it. You know, we've been told to keep silent and to mind our own business. When Kylie was still missing, we were told that Kylie would be found, and I quote, by the community and only by the community. It's like they consider themselves to be, you know, the superior beings, you know, the super men and women, and we are just incompetent peasants totally beneath them, watching from the bleachers. Okay. Here is, here, here's, here, here's my deal. And I mentioned this on another, I think it was on the CNY family. Uh, I commented on, one, on, one of their, on their videos that, in fact, it's, it's on the video that I have pinned that I really think, and I don't know how we can do this. I, I'm going to do some research on it and some brainstorming with other people and see. But I really think if, and I'm not going to do anything unless if it, unless they come out with a determination, a determination on this case that I think is just like total crap. You know, it's not feasible. You know, I don't, 
I say it and I know there's a lot of people, oh, we need to look at both sides. Well, I have, and I just don't see any way that this is an accident. So, I mean, unless they can give a total feasible explanation for it, which I don't really see how they can do that. But if they come out and say something, you know, come out and say this is what we've determined, blah, 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 and we know, all know that it's BS, all of us who have been involved, <clears throat> excuse me, all of us who have been involved in this online, I really think that somehow we need to start a petition that all of us sign. I don't know if it could be electronic signature. I don't know exactly how we could do it. Or maybe we could gather a bunch of different signatures and put them into one document. But what I plan on doing, now I used to work for the U.S. Attorney's Office. I have contacts there. Uh, I, I, I have a lot of, you know, being in law enforcement and in the legal, legal field, I have a lot of contacts um, that maybe could get the ball rolling on, or at least help get the ball rolling on stuff. And I plan on... If they come out with some BS, you know, determination on this case, my plan is to get a hold of the Attorney General of California, and hopefully that office isn't crooked either. Um, and if that doesn't work, you know, contact as many of my contacts, people contact you know, my contacts with the U.S. Attorney's Office and have them look into it. Because the way that this case has been handled, somebody needs to look into this. I mean, if they come out and they say, yeah, we have a suspect, we found out who killed her, cool. You know, I don't have any problem with that at all. But if they come out with some crap that, uh, you know, she was, you know, she had really long legs and arms and she was driving the car from the cargo hold. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's about as much sense as anything else that you come up with and say this was an accident, my opinion. Um, if they come out with that, I think, we people, we need, you know, we need to take action. We really do. Uh, I'm definitely willing to head it up. If somebody wants else more competent than me wants to head it up, that's cool, too. But I'm just saying I'm volunteering to do what I can to try to, you know, get justice, if justice is not served. Like I said, if they come out and say that, yeah, yeah, we've got a suspect, you know, and blah, 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 and he's been arrested and all that, I, I'm fine with that. That's cool. I don't have any problem with that at all. I'll just let it lie. But if they come out with anything that's just malarkey, nah. Yeah, we need, we need to do something. So let me, give me your thoughts on this. And, you know, if anybody else has any ideas how we can do this, um, that'd be awesome. Because I just, it's, it's like there's no way we can just let this crap just slide. No way. I'm not going to do it. You know, it's just, it's not right. I mean, it's just not right. It ain't right, man. So, anyway. Until next time, catch y'all later.